Hello and welcome to the CSN 3M podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Wade, where every week we tackle mentoring, mindsets, and myth busting, all as they pertain to health and nutrition. This week we have a little bit of a different episode. Instead of getting to hear me talk on and on and on and rant and ramble about random stuff, I decided it was time to bring on another voice, a couple experts, and someone with the real experience. Uh, With me tonight I have Eric Haberly, I have Jeremiah Rowe, and I have Robert Marty. Um, Those three individuals all have different reasons for being here. Jeremiah Rowe is our strength coach and lead coach of the Case Specific Wellness Facility in Plum. Uh, Robert Marty is our director of consulting services and corporate wellness coach. And Eric Haberly is a client and case specific wellness enthusiast as well as resident badass. And uh, today is all about getting to hear his story, some of the experiences he's had. Uh, And as you know, a lot of times we spend a lot of energy, effort, and minutes on this podcast talking about habits, habit development, mindset, and he is a testimony to that effort. Uh, I've known Eric personally for quite a few years now. Uh, I'll let him tell you details, but the long and short of it is we met a couple years ago um, with in a professional setting, and I was his dietitian slash wellness coach, and we had some successes, but we were having success on a, a hollow base, so we had to backtrack a little bit, build a stronger base, and move forward with more vitality and vigor in life. And it's all about self-care here. Um, So I will let him dig into it without further ado. I'll try and talk a little less this time. And uh, you'll hear Rob and Jeremiah kind of chime in with thoughts, feedback, and everything else. So hopefully the rest of this plays like a great conversation um, that resonates well with all of you listening. And thanks again for listening. So Eric, welcome. Hello, how are we? <laughs> We're all doing great. Thanks again for agreeing to do this. Yeah. No gun to your head, right? No, no problems no, there. I'm not, really not, not at all. all. Gun to do it, <laughs> um, yeah, so a little bit about myself. So I went and uh, probably in August of 2016, I uh, went to my doctor, uh, weighed in, and was um, in the 280s, and uh, they recommended that I go and see a nutritionist. Um, Which all doctors should do, by the way. Yeah. That's, that's that's how that should work. Um, so probably a couple days after debating whether I should do it or not, um, I decided to uh, give you a call. And I remember the first thing was to track your food for two weeks and then come in. Um, at that point when I met with Andrew, I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Um, I probably drank about four to five nights a week, uh, and yeah, I had really bad eating habits and not really working out. Um, yeah, so it was it was kind of a little bit of a shock to start getting into it. And what were some of your thoughts? Um, you know, this is one thing I always am curious about as the as the person behind the desk. What were some of the thoughts that you had? sort of going into, you know, stepping into the consult? Like, were you afraid I was going to write on your food journal with red Sharpie and criticize you and yell at you? Like, what was some of your preconceived notions well, of dietitians? I, the first thing I thought was, like, I had to be 100% honest awesome. in order for it to work. That is You true. know? But, like, I was expecting to get, like, a lashing. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't believe you're eating this much and drinking this much and you smoke and um how were how were the scars did i did i lash you real hard uh, i was i was bruised (laughs) um but like i came in having expecting like to turn in the test and get like a get a a 61 percent like barely passing Mm -hmm. um and i also thought you're gonna be older Uh. i don't know why like I thought, uh, fair enough. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not aging well. These long hours are, are doing their justice. So, yeah. And so I came in and, um, and when we met for the first time, it was really nice because I was getting, um, kind of a structure, but it didn't feel like I was being trapped in a box. And when I first started meeting with Andrew, we really focused on, uh, like a step goal, but the step goal was not very daunting. So I believe like when we first started, we were doing 50,000 steps a week, mm-hmm. which averages out to, I believe like, uh, like 7,000 a day. Or something yeah. Like that. Um, and just starting to get in the habit of 
moving and starting to do this. And this uh, began my obsession with step counting <laughs> for like six months. Um, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, so, and then the, our progress started. So when I, I weighed in at uh, 283 then, um, and I started doing the steps, and we slowly went from 50,000, and then we went to 60,000, and then 70,000. And it peaked right around, um, I think, March of that year. So went October to March. And in March, I did a week where I had like 100,000 steps. It was a really big deal. I made a big deal about it. But um, my training was um, all cardio. I, there was an elliptical I liked at the YMCA. I would do that two hours a day or walk. Um, I focused on my diet a lot. I was very, it was very built around where I was working. I was working yeah. nine to five. Um, and I was having a lot of success. Uh, and then as you have the success, you like want success in different parts and you, you don't accept things exactly. the same anymore. So we all get spoiled. We get, we get, we always want more. We have a legacy drive. Right? Yeah. So in, uh, in April of 2017, I quit smoking. I have not bought a pack of cigarettes since, but, um, to date by the way, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, and I just remember like having a conversation with Andrew, like, the person that counts how many days it's been since their last cigarette's the person that's going to smoke again. Yeah. And, like, don't make a big deal about it. Um, and, I, I mean, I pretty much have had that ever since. Like, if you lose one day, don't let it lose forever. Yeah. Um, so then continued going, and we were having a lot of success. And I ended up being unsatisfied with my job. So I took a risk and... Uh, Decided to take a sales job that was, I didn't realize at the time, was going to affect my weight loss journey. So by the time I took this new job, I went from 283 down to 248. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty much all lean mass that I was losing. I don't think there was a ton. There was a lot of fat mass. Yeah, loss, but it was but, a lot of water weight, too, because yeah, of the cardio. And, um, and I, my schedule changed drastically. Yep. And I got out of the habits of what made me successful in the first place because of the situation I was in. Yeah, life threw you a curve. Um, I didn't have a support system I have in place now. Mm -hmm. um, and slowly but surely, I went from 248 back to 303. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked that job for six months and quit. Hated it. Good for you for recognizing something that was not doing well in the work-life yeah. balance category. So that was at the end of 2017. And then at the beginning of 2018, while still seeing Andrew and coming in and not tracking food and constantly meeting with him and just knowing that I wasn't excited about the meetings anymore. I was uh, not being successful. I was continually gaining weight. Mm -hmm. um, but I still met with you. And we kind of shifted our mindset to focusing on what I was doing at the time, which was uh, painting. Um, I ended up selling 27 paintings in 2018. One uh, of which is, uh, I believe one of those is hanging in my house. Yeah. If anybody out there has ever seen my Instagram, the Pittsburgh Dietitian Instagram, there's a really cool painting of my two Rottweilers that are my obsessed for children. And uh, Eric is the one that actually painted that for us as a part of a gift for Allison. And he's... A ridiculously amazing artist. One of the fun. That was one of the, probably the funniest things during that year, where like he said, we weren't really focused on weight loss. We were really doing more like life coaching at that point, right? We were working on, um, you know, fulfillment, job stuff, and it was hilarious because him and I were talking about stress management one day, and I started asking him what kind of things that he'd like to do other than you know go out and have a drink to relieve stress, and he goes, I used to paint. And I'm like thinking in my head, like, oh yeah, like you know, doodle book style. Finger like, painting is nice. Yeah, <laughs> finger painting. Like that sounds like something you should do. And so I was like, dude, you should totally do that. And about I don't know, two weeks later, he sends me a picture of this outline sketch for the Antonio Brown, R.I.P. Um, catch in the corner of the end zone for the Steelers, and it was absolutely pristine. And I was like, bro, you don't paint. You like you're like a muralist. He goes didn't you know that I went to Pittsburgh Art Institute? And I was like, no, we never talked about this. IUP correction. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it turns out this kid's a, a freaking artist. He doesn't yeah. just paint. But anyway, so, so that year, um, I started 
building self-confidence in a different way because for the first time I was working for myself, I was selling paintings, um, fulfilling, you know, you always have a little bit of regret when you're not working towards your goals. Yep. And for the first time I was really working towards, uh, my artistic goals of being a, a successful artist. And, uh, I had a lot of success in 2018, um, and continue to paint and make artwork. Uh, but by the, tw- by the end of 2018, me and Andrew were meeting a ton and people can relate to this. You, you get, you lose weight, you start losing weight. So you start buying smaller clothes. Then you start putting it back on mm-hmm. and the clothes get tighter and tighter and tighter and the- till they can't fit. And then all of a sudden you're fitting into the clothes that you used to fit into. And then they're tighter. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden you're, f- the clothes that were so- the big clothes on you are now tight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew, uh, me and Andrew had met, I think in December of 2018. And he's like, we're going to schedule an appointment for January 11th, 2019. Um, and, and we'll try and have a fresh start into the new year. Uh, so when I, when the new year started, I decided I was going to go a month without drinking um, and that's when me and you met on January 11th. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Andrew kind of just got firm with me and said, if you're going to be really serious about this, then you should join boot camp. You know, you're going to be in this office a ton. Um, you're going to be surrounded by people that are going to be in your best interest. I think it would be a good thing for you. And right around the time, I said, if I'm going to do this weight loss journey again, there's two things that I primarily want to focus on that I didn't focus on before. One is focusing on habits, um, paying attention to it. Habits, you do, most people do the same things day in and day out. You brush your teeth first, or you put your hair gel in first, or you, you know, you, you steam your clothes, or, you know... You drive the same route to work every day. That's why a lot of the times you don't even remember driving it because your body is so accustomed to you making that drive that you just naturally do it. So I really wanted to focus on uh, habits. And the second thing I wanted to focus on was mental health Um, because this is uh, weight loss is a mind game. Um, There's going to be pitfalls. Uh, There's going to be things you know, trying to figure out why you gained weight and why that's, uh, important and, and you need to have that support system. And so those are kind of the main goals that I started with in 2019. I love it. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. Cause, uh, you know, something that we talk about and, you know, you are somebody that can really speak to this and see this, right. Is that, you know, weight changes in many ways are a a reflection of mental state, right? You were losing weight when you were starting to build some momentum in life. And yeah, you were losing weight because you were controlling your food and taking steps. But the reason you had the motivation to do those things is because you were feeling self-confidence, you were feeling positivity. And then when life threw a bunch of curveballs your way, threw you out of your you know, your orbit, so to speak, um, insecurities, financial, mental, emotional, whatever it is, right? We start stirring up and start dealing with, we started to realize that there was a lot of emotional things that were just being ignored. And so then you spent a couple years addressing those professionally, personally, right, within family, all of those types of things. You're painting, you started to find an expression of yourself that you had hidden and hadn't used for quite some time. And now all of a sudden you come back mentally in a much better state, right? Now during that time where you were trying to find yourself, we can say, the waistline was growing larger. And the waistline was growing larger because you weren't really paying attention to self, right? The mental state was not in a good place. And then all of a sudden, you come back in, you start to develop some resolve. And it's again, like you said, it's not about how how well can I restrict and force myself to be on an elliptical. Instead, this round two has transformed into habits, which is moving in a way that you enjoy and look forward to eating in a way that is intentional and more importantly, surrounding yourself with people that allow you to work on your mental growth, your mental self and your mental state of mind, right? Like just overall health, wellness and like being the best you. Yeah. And I think, uh, so I started, uh, doing audible, the power of habit 
Mm-hmm. Uh, in the, in Great the book, book, by the way, highly yeah, recommend. Um, and it was a book that you actually recommended to me. And so I, I have an hour or two and from work. Um, when you're starting a journey like this, I, if you have time like that, um, you don't always have to listen to, to books, but I thought it was a really good way to get, um, kind of alternative points of view about certain things. So in the power of habit, they essentially talk about developing a keystone habit. So when you originally said, hey, Eric, boot camp is 12 weeks, you know, are you going to commit to it? And I said, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to commit to doing boot camp for 12 weeks. I'm also going to commit to not drink the entire time that I did boot camp for the first 12 weeks. And I just, I told myself because they talked about this keystone habit, I wanted to just come in Come every, like, show up to boot camp every single time. Do not miss. Don't make excuses. Go every single time to the point that eventually over time, it is not part of my decision-making process. It is part of my day. I don't think about coming here. It is, I'm showing up to boot camp and working out and... It's just what you do. Yeah, so... Uh, it's a we, non-negotiable way to think about it, right? Yeah. Everyone in this room, one of the things that we do is there's some sort of physical activity, whether it be boot camp, whether it be running, whether it be bodybuilding style weight training, whatever it is, all of us have exercise of some kind as a non-negotiable. It's a part of who we are. Everyone here knows I work usually 12, 14 hour days, but the one thing that does not waver is that sometime in that day I make time to exercise. And it's not because I have to burn X calories so that I'm worthy right? It's mentally so that I'm in the right place so that I can be the best me. It's a part of my primer. It's a part of my cocktail that makes me the best me. And moving your body is absolutely valuable to anybody that's willing to, to look at it that way. And, and, and Jared could, Jeremiah could talk about this a little bit, but when I initially heard boot camp, I was like, Oh my God, like, I'm going to get yelled at. I'm not <laughs> Once gonna, again, like, <laughs> lashes are coming back out. Like, I'm going to get yelled at. This is, I'm not going to be able to do this workout. I'm going to embarrass myself. Like, what did I sign myself into? This is ridiculous. Um, and guess what? There were workouts I was not able to do. Mm-hmm. And um, Jer made modifications to the workouts. And I wasn't the only one. You know, there are other people in the boot camp class that were unable to do certain workouts and we got modifications until we eventually were able to do the things, you know, do the workouts and kind of work towards that. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, Eric probably gets yelled at a lot more now just because uh, <laughs> he was nice but, to me back then. <laughs> yeah. I had to give him like the first week or two of being nice. And then we, after we, that, were, we were a pretty new facility too. We couldn't scare him away. Yeah. Really. <laughs> it's all downhill after that. But, uh, no, and that's something that we try to uh, encourage in the minds of anybody who, who comes out to, to check out the boot camp and see what they think is that at the end of the day, regardless of what exercises are up on that board that are on the agenda for the night, everyone can do every exercise in some way. We might have to modify, we might have to drop weight here, we might have to have something for you to hold on to to support yourself, but there's a way to get around everything. Uh, you know, or every limitation that each person that comes in for the boot camp has. And Eric, like you said, he kind of came in with that mindset, you know, of, you know what's going to happen here? Am I going to be able to actually handle this? And uh, he's been more consistent than even me as the instructor as far as uh, getting the boot camp. And he makes sure to remind me of that every single week. I've been to, <laughs> I've been to more boot camps than Jared. Trainer, yeah. Yes. yeah, it sounds just like that every time. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how it sounds. I went to... <laughs> Last year, I went to 139 of 145 boot camps. That's a pretty good percentage. Yeah, the first one I ever missed, I was sick. Jeremiah almost, I had like, I had told myself I wasn't going to miss a single class in the first 12 weeks, and I literally, it was probably like week 10, (laughs) and uh, and I was sick, and I I had the flu, and Jer's like, you got to take like a, you got to take medicine and show up. And I was like, well, Michael Jordan played in the playoffs 
<laughs> with the flu and dropped like 50. And then I realized I'm not Michael Jordan, you know? Fair. So I'm just going to, I'm yeah. going to, yeah. So I, I missed one. I went to 35 or 36. Um, but it, yeah. I probably emotionally abused you over that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a Facebook post, Eric's first miss. It was like a like a start date. It was like one fourteen to like three eighteen. Never forget. Like, that yeah, the, like R.I.P. <laughs> the streak. Eric. Yeah. Um. So yeah. But that so, was your Keystone habit, right? And it's you know going back to the Power Habit book, that yeah. Keystone habit, that thing that you focused on. And you know what's neat when I hear Jer talk about modifications. That's another way to think about it. That is meeting people where they are, right? So when you and I first met a few years ago, giving you some structure that allowed you to kind of understand how to spread food and offered you a different way to think about things to sort of plant that seed, right? That was me meeting you where you are and the habits and the things that we've worked on over those years when the weight wasn't our focus, but instead your lifestyle was the focus or your professional career was the focus. It's meeting you where you are. Um, and then to now, right, when we interact with each other the way we do, that's really what the mark of a good coach is, right? Is someone that's able to meet you where you are and then help you see and forge a path forward. And I did a couple of weeks ago, for those of you listening, if you haven't already, um, the first New Year's podcast on, like, I think it was like that Monday before New Year's, so December 30th. Yeah. It was the snowball that becomes an avalanche, right? And it's the same thing. You have this snowball. You can call the snowball your keystone habit, right? Yeah. And you can allow that, do that one thing really well and let that be surrounded by good behaviors. And if we think about it, if we just recap briefly, over the last couple of years, you have recircled in the weight loss side of things. But more sure. importantly, you found better eating habits. You found a love for exercise, an actual enjoyment of exercise. Yeah. You found camaraderie. You've worked on smoking cessation. You've upgraded your career. And you've experimented with a passion and hobby in art that has become a side gig, side hustle, whatever you want to call it, right? You have gone from a place of frustration, depression, and confusion to a place of full-bodied fulfillment. That is the avalanche. Right. That's what we talk about, and that's how habits accumulate. So it's so cool to see that in you. Yeah, and and they talk about this in the book as well. So, like, they, they use um, Bill Wilson the founder of AA and in part of the reason that they um, have found out that people have success with it is because um, a group setting where there's a common belief mm -hmm. uh, is a better way to develop and uh, sustain a habit. And I think, you know, when you start doing boot camp and you start getting active and you start being, you start surrounding yourself with, people that want you to succeed and hit your goals versus your friends who say, Hey, I know you've been eating good this whole week, but do you want to go get pizza? Do you want to go and have a couple beers? You know, you start surrounding yourself, um, with those types of people. Uh, you all, you, it almost, you can't quit. Like they won't let you, you won't let yourself. Then you start believing, um, and it just starts snowballing. Mm -hmm. And then you start finding other people um, to be support systems. So, you know, I have, I do regularly go and see a therapist. Not because I am in a bad mental state. It's to have that support system to get me. So I don't take three months off of working out and, and fall off my goals. Uh, I come, I come uh, three days a week and hang out with Jeremiah Yep. And work out. Hit it hard, um, get some laughs, get some sweat. Jeremiah will text me if I miss one class. Oh. You know? Um, and I don't want to deal with Jeremiah texting me. And telling me Nobody out. wants him texting me. Yeah. I'd rather <laughs> yeah, see him. So. Yeah. And then, and then I, found, I found good people at work. I have, I have um, someone that is very influential on me at work. Just, you know, because at the end of the day, you're at work 40 hours typically. You know, if you have mm -hmm. someone that you've told your goals to, um, that makes you more prone to eat a salad versus getting a hoagie and fries. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yep. so you really got to, um, you got to trust other people to, you're going to need help to do it. And you're going to need help to lose weight. Yeah. You're going to have days, like I went, what, how many months without 
losing any weight during this year. Yeah. We had, I mean, we had a solid four months. And, I mean, your muscle mass was changing, but your body fat wasn't going down aggressively. Right. So he had what most people would call a plateau, but really it was allowing the body to change. Right? I mean, yeah. it's cool because you really had, you know, they had the initial surge, big weight drop, bunch of fat loss, muscle build, and then you had a period of time where the muscle was there. Uh, we weren't losing as much fat, but also we weren't pressuring the diet as much, right? We were continuing to focus on this full-bodied approach to life. That's when you started going to see the therapist and working on some yeah. of that self-care and introspection. And then what do you know? You start to find and realign some stars, and the weight loss continues to come as a side effect of that. And that's what's so neat, and that's kind of what I wanted to make sure that people could hear is the difference between a diet and a lifestyle is very apparent in round one versus round two with you, right? The first time you and I met, I gave you some tangible starting points and you ran with them, but you did them because you had to, because you were going to see me once a month and the scale was the thing that gave you a sticker or not, right? Round two, the difference has been we're not tracking calories obsessively in an app. We're not like hovering over the scale to tell us whether you're worthy or not, right? You're surrounding yourself with people that you enjoy being with. You're surrounding yourself with people that genuinely care about you. You're keeping yourself accountable to intentional goals that allow you to be a better person, not just a skinnier person, right? But sure. a healthier person in mind, body, and spirit. That is the difference, and that is what diet versus lifestyle is. Yeah, and I, I think... I think the first time I did it, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I don't want to disappoint Andrew. Yeah. You know, I'm going to track food. And then I spent, I spent a year and a, a year and a half just coming in, just disappointing after disappointing. You know what I mean? Well, that was more perception. To you, yeah. Right? yeah <laughs> but, I don't think you were disappointed. Yeah. But, but me, no, but like I process. was no longer hitting my goals. Yeah. I was, I was not coming in and being downweight, it was coming up in and being upweight. Yep. And then I think this time around, um, yeah, it's more to kind of do it for me. Yeah. You know, versus dis I've disappointed you before, so it's not like Yeah, that's yeah. You, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty easy to disappoint and I don't I don't get too upset. No. Yeah. <laughs> but but to your <laughs> point, to. what you said is so perfect. I want to make sure people hear that, right? Who are you doing it for? right? You're doing it for you. Right. So in the spirit of start with why, the first time around it was like, I'm going to lose some weight because my doctor told me to, and I'm going to do it this way because this dietitian told me to. Yeah, that it worked for a while. Yeah, it worked for a little while, but it was a short-sighted goal because at the end of the day, who were you doing it for? You were doing it for the doctor and for the dietitian. Right. The second round, you came back and said, I'm ready to do this for me. This has to change because I want it to change. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. Not specific to weight, but just where you were mentally, physically, and emotionally. And you decided to employ me as your health assistant and employ Jer as your daily your daily harassment coach slash strength coach, right? And employ yeah. <laughs> you know a therapist as a as a weekly check in to think about your emotional status. Right. And now you have. A bunch of people that are your assistants on your journey instead of your guides on their journey. Yeah, and I, I think um, I think that's really important with the weight loss school because I remember you touching base with me uh, a couple weeks ago, and you just asking me asking me like how my week was going, and I said, you know, I had a couple bad days. It was over Christmas, whatever. Like everyone eats bad over Christmas. Just keep swinging. Um, and I, I told you, I have too good of a support system now yeah. to be able to slip for more than a couple days. Um, and that that's a huge difference too. I didn't really, besides you, yeah, really have a support system the last time. Exactly. If I can butt in on this for a second too, I, I think one of the really cool transformations that I've seen over this past year with Eric, like on the note of that support system, is that he has not only found a support system for himself and, and radically changed his life, but he's become a support system. So we have the boot camp class that's a, a small group training, and Eric is the hype man of that class. He comes in an hour, hour and a half before every class, almost every week, and when he doesn't, I yell at him. But he comes in and he gets on the treadmill, and he just he literally walks on the treadmill for at least an hour before almost every single boot camp. And then in boot camp, everybody else in the class is getting hyped up. And you know, they're, they're hitting new PRs, uh, hitting new weights. And Eric's over there just – I've never seen someone literally so hype about everything all the time. 
And uh, so, so it, it's just been really cool to see him not only find that support system for himself, but to take on that atmosphere and become that for everybody else in the uh, in the environment. So. I, I appreciate that um, because I, I honestly feel like a lot of people are so negative on themselves, especially yeah. like when they're starting to do stuff and they don't realize it's so awesome to see. You know, uh, one of my one of my other boot campers um, maybe is a little hard on themselves, but since she started, she has been one of the most consistent people to showing up mm-hmm. and just gives her all day in and day out. Um, is older than I am, but literally just is so consistent and um and does such a great job and people sometimes need to know like other people notice how good of a job they're doing yeah Yeah. you know just to kind of give them that boost because they are and just keep going exactly things like that so yeah so i'm I'm so happy that obviously this community has been able to support you and i I want to thank you again for taking the time to share your story on the podcast um i hope that we get to represent you well and obviously, um, as I've said before, I'm very proud of the mindset that you're developing, the lifestyle you're, you're thriving in. Um, and it's really neat to watch, you know, obviously watch those belt loops go down as a side effect of you smiling. That's, yeah. that's really what this is about, right? It's recognizing that weight loss is a side effect of lifestyle and lifestyle is a reflection of mental state. Yeah. And you also got to just, um, it's nice to just smell the roses and yeah. enjoy the process. Yeah. Um, and, to, to yeah. actually be alive for it, right? So hold yeah. your breath to the finish line. This is just who you are now. This is what you do. Yeah, now. yeah. So that was cute, guys. That was really I cute. love it. That was nice. Uh, I'll chime in. This is Rob Marty, just for the sake of not going the whole podcast without saying anything. <laughs> um, but I recently joined Case Specific. My first day was January 6th. And as I wrapped up my prior engagement, a group of coworkers gave me a little sign. Um, this all started at a previous job, even. I have little wood plaques from like TJ Maxx and Marshall's. And they always have fun sayings. And so I was given a sign that says, you never know who you're inspiring. And I was given that because I had the opportunity to do health coaching on the phone and we were in cubicles. So my coworkers would sit around and be doing their jobs and I would be diving into somebody's mental, physical and emotional state on the phone, um, oftentimes all over the U.S. because we did phone consultations everywhere. And, And they would get off the phone, I would finish that conversation and wrap up, and then these coworkers would always say, I felt like you were talking to me. Um, and that's what it's about here at Case Specific Nutrition and Wellness. And as Eric so wonderfully said and pointed out on his journey, that it is about you. And Andrew talks about your why. It's not our why. If we took a cookie cutter, if we weren't case specific, if we were one size fits all, then people would come in, we'd give them a meal plan, we'd give them a workout that was on a Word document, and we would say, hey, thanks, have a great day. But you never know who you're inspiring when you take the time to treat every interaction like a new opportunity to make a difference. So there's my two cents. Thank you, Rob. I think that's a great place to end. This has been the first, and I will repeat the first, CSN 3M podcast interview hopefully i am not a, an atrocious host uh, we'll be doing some of these again in the future if i don't lose all of the subscribers as always thank you for listening uh, hopefully this was a helpful mindset gave you some monday morning motivation and uh, pep and please select share um, subscribe to the podcast you, uh, you can find us at case specific nutrition on Uh, Instagram and on Facebook. We are Case Specific PGH on Twitter. I am Pittsburgh Guy Attition, and we will see you and talk to you next Monday.